Hello, Solarloon here, and I am an independent game developer who's working on a game project called I Know Who I Am. It's an adventure game uh, that I was working with or making with uh, Raylib in the Go language, but that I am now working with uh, and making in the Godo engine. Um, I was switching. I am switching over to Godo uh, specifically because I'm making games that I want to port to mobile devices, and Raylib doesn't have an iOS port currently. It does have an Android port, but not iOS. So I figured that I'd go with Godo since uh, I know that it does have uh, mobile support. And I've investigated different engines as well, and, and thought that this was a pretty good one. And I've also used Godo in the past, so it's uh, it's working pretty well. Uh, so I'll show what I have so far, and then uh, I'll talk a little bit about it. Yeah, so that's what I have so far. It's basically a, and I have a couple of puzzles, uh, basic puzzles. But yeah, it's basically a, a, char a character adventure game. Uh, before I was working in this, and it was basically becoming a little bit of a game, a little bit of a game engine that I was going to open source. Uh, but now that since uh, now since I'm working with Godot and it's just going to be a normal game, I'm probably just going to open source the game uh, with a purchase of the of the of the game. So. You'll buy the game and be able to play it, and then you'll also have access to the source uh, to examine how it's made. Um, yeah, so currently uh, what we have here uh, is a couple of scenes um, that represent you know, different maps. Uh, they're made in tiled, put together in tiled, uh, which is what I'm using for uh, you know putting the tiles on the map as well as uh, creating the solid solidity so that you can't uh, walk through the map. And it's working pretty well. Uh, something I like about Tiled a lot is that it's very easy to see if there's any lines that are, any points that are not um, contained. So it's a lot easier to see like, oh, you know, uh, I, I have a hole in my geometry. You can see that a lot more easily here than you can with uh, other other tools uh, that I've used in the past, which is very nice. Um, I like that the, you know, with this system where I'm basically drawing lines between each point, it's very easy to edit. It's very easy to see where the points line up and, you know, basically where problems can arise. It's, it's, uh, it's very, very easy to use and I, I like it a lot. Um, yeah. Yeah, I like it a lot. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's good. Uh, I'm using the add-on for Godot, uh, for tiled, which allows me to just import the tiled map uh, in. It, it basically acts like the map is a scene of its own. Uh, so it just automatically imports in with all of the collision setup, with all the objects set up. Uh, so, uh, well, the objects that I set here, like uh, for solidity, but I still have to use Godot, or still do use Godot to actually position the the objects that are interested, uh, that are um, kind of added to the map live, like the player, uh, and different events and things like that. Uh, the event system is one that I came up with myself. Um, it's the same as the last the last event system I, I w was working with uh, in, in the previous version of the game, essentially, where basically um, it's a scripting language that I invent, invented for this purpose that allows me to display messages, play sounds, play animations, um, 
display choices and jump to labels and things like that. Um, what else? I recently just implemented the ability to save and load the game to a file, uh, which is very useful. And the way that I did that is basically the same. Let me see if I can show that. So um, the way that I implemented saving and loading to a file, it basically takes advantage of saving and loading uh, maps for persistence. So when you go from one map to another, uh, you might change something on a map that needs to be loaded back when you return to it. Like for example, if you take an item from a, from an, uh, from a dresser or a chest or whatever, uh, you might play an animation that has the chest or the dresser be opened, right? Well, when you leave the map and come back, uh, we're unloading the map and then reloading it fresh. So we want to basically have the dresser or the chest uh, display that that animation again. So uh, what I'm doing here is I save the data for the map for each child of where it is and what animation is playing. I save that information to a uh, dictionary and then store that in a global location called game data. And so that way, when we load up the map again, we just load the map data if it exists. And we can extend that for saving uh, the game out to a file by just saving that game data uh, d uh, dictionary to a file and loading it from that dictionary. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, overall, it's really solid. Um, Godot is a great engine, one I would heavily recommend. Uh, on my last video, I remember I, I was a little bit harsh on the engine. I was a little bit uh, rough with it and saying uh, that it's frustrating and things like that. Um, as it turns out, I, well, I was I was uh, speaking off the cuff essentially, and that was the uh, result of that video. Um, I do think that I, I, you know, that was wrong of me to speak off the cuff and be so uh, abrasive with it. Uh, but at the same time, the issues I was running into were indeed bugs um, that I reported to the GitHub repository, and that they, uh, you know, were identified as bugs and they were fixed. Um, uh, the fix isn't available publicly yet. It, I, it, there's no, there hasn't been a stable release since the fix, fixes have been implemented, but they were fixed, so that's great. Um, but they were bugs, so it's not like I was just railing against the engine, but rather I, it was caused by an actual issue that I was running into. Um, so I, I was thinking about taking that video down, but I don't think that's necessary. I think that it's good to leave it up because it's a good example of, um, you know, basically you're going to run into issues that frustrate you as a develop developer. And I don't think it's right to present game development as though nothing ever goes wrong. Things will go wrong, you will have issues. Um, you need to persist, you need to get frustrated and pr proceed through that frustration. Uh, or if you're going to get frustrated, you need to proceed through that frustration and, you know, deal with it. Um, if you think that I've gotten to this stage of making games and, and gotten this much content uh, of this game by just being good. That's not the case. It, it takes a lot of time to deal with something and not understand something and try something and work with something to get good at anything. So I think I'm going to leave the video up. Uh, I was frustrated with Godot, Godot before. I still um, have there are still issues with Godot that need to, I feel like should be resolved to really improve the usability of it, but it is still, it, it is a highly recommended engine. I still would uh, say it's a good one that I would recommend for making games. Uh, so if anyone has any questions about um, my project and, and you know how things are set up currently, I'll be happy to make follow, follow up videos that kind of show uh, the game in a little bit more detail. Uh, but for now, I think I'll stop here. It's been just a, around 10 minutes and uh, we can make more videos or I can make more videos as time permits and as uh, people have questions about how certain uh, things are implemented. All right, well, thank you very much for watching. Uh, it's been real and I'll catch you guys on the flip side and thank you very much once again. See ya.